All right, guys, I am in the middle of making another license plate guitar. I got some nice stuff. I got one uh, from North Mississippi, uh, one from Oklahoma, nice farm truck license plate. And then the one I'm going to be working on right now, I've got a demand for a couple of cowboy themed guitars and I've got this Wyoming license plate. So I'm putting together uh, that and I'm in the middle of making a neck and I stumbled upon something that I want to share with you. It's a pretty cool trick. All right, let's start here. You might remember the episode I did called Scarf Joint. If you don't, I'm going to put a link to it right in the upper uh, right hand corner there. You'll see an eye pop up and you can access it there. But you'll remember that uh, our this is a little block here our, our uh, a sample of what we typically use for a neck and then this is a block that I end up cutting a headstock out of. Now you'll remember uh, we discussed in that episode that in order to get the offset angle where uh, the neck or the headstock tilts back from the neck above the fingerboard that we got that by measuring three inches from the end or 78 millimeters and then drawing a line to connect that corner with a line here. Cutting that gave us the 15 degree or so offset angle that we need. And then of course we did the same thing but we measured three inches plus another six and for those of you interested in the metric system the three was 78 and the overall measurement uh, was 225 millimeters or about um, I'd have to turn that around to, to figure that out about nine inches and that gives us the layout for our offset and to use our neck template to draw uh, the neck out here like so. Now anybody that's done scarf joints knows that when you start setting an angle like this and gluing it, um, this will always want to slip off and if you don't pay attention and, and you clamp and you're clamping an, an angled surface, the next thing you know this is slipping back and then you come back an hour later and you find out that this is sitting like this or like this and it's ruining you have to start over. Some people may think about uh, drilling a couple little holes here, putting toothpicks down, or even driving a couple brad nails in here, uh, and then using a nail set to hold it all together while you're gluing. But I stumbled across something I think is working really well for me. I want to show you, I've searched around the hardware store and found this piece of tulip poplar. Um, I'm an arborist by trade. I don't know if you knew that or not, but this is a really nice looking piece of wood. It's got all kinds of character and color in it. And then I also found a piece um, that has um, some red in it. It's also tulip poplar. It's got some pinkish color in there. But anyway, I really like this wood. It's going to look good. So I want to show you what I did here. I measured the width of the neck board and it's about 38 millimeters which gives us about 19. I found the center there. I marked that off. Um, I cut my angle in it like so and then I made a couple marks where I know where my center is on both sides. Then I took the headstock piece, cut the angle in it, um, measured it out. It's 90 uh, millimeters wide. Made the 45 uh, millimeter or center mark where I knew everything was. Um, put my headstock on it um, like so. Trace that out. Anyway, um, right here is about where uh, the cutout for the headstock is going to sit on the neck. So what I did was when I made all these measurements and had all my angles cut, I lined up everything like this and then imagine that these are all the angles and everything like so. And I lined up everything like this and then I come about 15 millimeters off of the center line here and then I came up another 20 millimeters here off the center line and then using the width of the board for the neck knowing that it is 19 millimeters of center, I went from the center line eight millimeters this way, 
or excuse me, nine millimeters this way, nine millimeters this way. And I ended up with what looked like a triangle pattern. Then I took a small bit, I clamped these together, took this little small bit, went through each one of those marks, just enough, now you want to remember this would be angled under here, just enough to get through the headstock and into the angled edge of the, of the headboard or the headstock and neck board. So at the end of that, then what I did is I put on a little bit a bigger bit that makes us for a snug fit on this wooden dowel. Uh, you can get this at Hobby Lobby or, or, or a, a place like that, a craft store. And so I took and separated the boards and then went through and drilled each one of the triangle patterns in both boards. So I'm pretty proud of this. There's my triangle. Um, you can see that that's cut at an angle, um, the 15 degree angle. I ended up with these three holes like this and then where my headstock, I ended up with holes there as well. Now, the easy part about this is now I take the wooden doweling and I slip it down through here. I need another hand here. I slip it down there like that, push that through, and then put my dowels in the other hole, like so. And now what happens is, I'm not gonna cut these off just yet, but I'm gonna turn this over and you can see that this is going to pin these on and it almost looks like a mortise joint. The light isn't that great, but can you see? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all this up. I'm still going to put my clamps right here like so while it's glued. But because these dowels are here, this is not going to slip this way or this way. So before I glue this up, I'm going to take this over to my scroll saw and cut out this because this is easier to cut out while these are separated like so. Once I, I get this cut out, then I'll put this back together, glue it up and show you what it looks like. All right, I've rough shaped this out on uh, the scroll saw. I've left myself a little room uh, to... to uh, do some more shaping later once it gets glued up and I have everything cleaned up. But now I'm going to put some tight bond on here. I'm not going to be shy about it. And I'm also not going to worry about getting it in those holes because I actually want these wooden dowels to help hold this in here. Okay, so we're all glued up. Put that there like that. And take this dowel here, slip it through, find the corresponding hole there, take two more dowels, work them through. We heard that bubble wrap pop in this envelope I have and we just wiggle this back and forth and there we go. Can you see it? Perfect. Now just like usual, we're going to put our clamp on each side. These are kind of small clamps, but it doesn't matter. I'll put a big one right there. And the beauty of this is nothing is slipping. These dowels will hold it in place. Once this sets up, I'm going to go along now uh, with a piece of paper towel and wipe off the excess glue off my seams just like usual. I'm not going to worry too much about what's sticking out there, uh, but I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to let it dry and then once that's done, I'll come back and cut these dowels off cleanly and we'll have a look. All right, this is the next day. You can tell it's daylight. It's a little bit lighter in the shop, so that's good. Um, the glue has set up. We'll pull the clamps off and the first thing we're going to do is take this flush cut saw. Some people use these for fretting. And we're going to cut down 
the dowels like so up on top you want to remember that the fingerboard is going to lay across here so we're going to do some sanding here but that's how it come out and it's pretty solid so I'm gonna cut these down here like so and then when we get done with our sanding and shaping you can see I've got a little bit of trim work to here and uh, to cut a radius in here and then once I get this all sanded down I'll show you what it looks like but I think this is the answer to everything slipping off and it, it's going to give us a nice decorative touch too all right i'm back it's done hey before i forget you hear that music it's a band called crushed out two people in the band uh, franklin and moselle um, unfortunately that band isn't together anymore but they had some great slide guitar music and i'm going to give you a link below and pop you an i card right about now Anyway, I'm going to mess up the focus right here, but the neck is done. Got a place for a bone bridge. Um, Tammy signed the back as always, but there's our pattern right there. It worked out really well for me. Um, I fretted the neck, did the cutouts, and it's going to go into, that's right, a license plate box from MGB. And this guitar is actually going to be up for another raffle this time the Acton Women's Club uh, school luncheon on November 14th. Yeah, it's November 14th in Acton, California. So get in your car, get on a plane, get on a boat, get on a bicycle, get on a motorcycle. I don't know what you want to do, but they're going to raffle this off. So one more time, that's crushed out here that. Anyway, don't forget at the end of the video is my email address send me an email uh, give me a like give me a dislike give me something and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time